Joining us today is Dr. Doug Neiman. He's a diagnostic radiologist at Bellevue Medical Center. Doug, thanks for joining me again. You Happy survived the last year. Yep. We've got you back. Yep. <laughs> I think you might have been my second ever Facebook Live, so I appreciate it was you fun. giving me another chance. You did awesome. I I'm going to try to improve this time around. Uh, we want to remind our viewers that the information that we share today is for informational purposes only. So if you have specific questions regarding your treatment plan, your medical care, you need to go to your doctor directly. So let's start off by kind of walking people through. I mentioned we were at Bellevue Medical Center. Can mm -hmm. you describe where that is? I think it's one of the more convenient locations to get to in Sarpy County. Yeah, so for those not in Bellevue, um, easiest way to get here would be take the JFK South. Um, to the 370 exit and then you head west just for a block or two to 25th Street and you can't miss us around the corner. And super ample parking. That's important to me. As yes, a patient. out front parking. I've uh, never had to wait to find a spot. Nope. Now explain, we, we have a kind of a dual presence here. We've got the hospital and then we have uh, physicians in a different building but they're all connected. That's right. So there is a physician's building that's attached to the hospital. Um, so there are clinics here and there's also the inpatient facility. Okay. And we are on the um, hospital side, again, diagnostic radiologist. So today we're here talking about breast health, 3D mammography, it's the month of October, it's kind of front and center on everyone's mind. So the room that we're in, let's talk about that. First we talk about the building, the room I wanted to show in particular because not only do I work for Nebraska Medicine, but I'm a patient, and I have seen your staff before for my own mammograms. I was very impressed by this room. So can you walk us through where we're standing now? Yes, so this is actually the waiting room for the uh, women, uh, particularly the ones doing mammography. Uh, call it the locker room. Uh, but there's a restroom, there's changing uh, rooms, uh, and there's couches, uh, a refrigerator, TV. So this is only for women and it's their own locker room. It's something that they did really well. So I've been here for 10 years and when I first did the walkthrough I was very impressed with the facility and I really thought that we ought to make mammography and emphasis because of this. So Taylor, he talks about these um, lockers which are really nice because you can key in a code and lock up all your valuables. These, I'm going to use my loud voice, these are individualized changing rooms which again it's so personalized. And I don't know if it's because I'm a mom of three and I just don't have a lot of downtime, but sitting here waiting for my mammogram was just very zen-like and relaxing. Yes. <laughs> There's a TV, there was no interruptions. Yep. And, and not that we want uh, kids running around, but this was, the intention was to be, um, you know, to ease all the anxiety mm -hmm. with the whole process of doing this. Well, it definitely worked for me. So there's a lot of talk about the, out there about different ages to schedule the mammograms. What would be your recommendation? So I follow the, our, our institution, which is American College of Radiology, and they recommend starting it for average risk women, starting at the age of 40 and doing yearly mammography until you uh, or as long as you're in good health, is that, that's the recommendation. Okay, and I think um, the relationship with your personal physician is huge. I know that I see a doctor here and um, you know being able to just have that conversation again about family history is so important because obviously yes. that age range can shift based yep. off of what you have in your family. Yeah, and obviously if there's a, a first degree relative, a, a mom, a sister, or a daughter who's had breast cancer, you ought to talk to your, your primary care physician to see when you, the best time to start screening would, would be. So keep in mind as we're talking here on this chat, you can ask questions in the comments section. If you want to just absorb the content and think about it and then potentially have a question after we wrap up, you can still leave a comment and we will get in touch with the experts such as Dr. Neiman to get back to you. Um, we talk about that this is kind of a waiting area for women, but something that was you know, new to me when I began working here last year, men can get breast cancer. So it's probably important to realize also if there's a man out there that um, experiences a suspicious lump, you have the same advice to them about a mammogram. Well, that's correct. So they would go see their primary care physician, and if deemed necessary, the, ne the next step to work up would be the mammogram. What's the ratio? One in eight women for breast that, cancer? That's correct. That's the, the most common cited uh, statistic is it's one in eight will develop breast cancer. And mammography's, uh, you know, it's really been shown that the incidence of breast cancer starts to increase about uh, 40 years, and so that's why the ACR recommends start screening at the age of 40. And that would be considered your baseline? That's correct. And so yes. then someone like you, when you're examining the diagnostic, the, what, what's the term? The film? Uh, Tell image, me, imagery. Image, let me, yeah, let we, me we, talk we like I know what I'm talking about. We try to avoid the word pictures. Okay. We use image. <laughs> okay. 
okay, so when you're, uh, the baseline gives you that idea that the next year you would view a new image the following That's right. year and see if there's any changes. Yeah, and, and you know, it's important to, to have them every year. Not only you can detect the small cancers that occur from one year to the next, but also it gives the radiologist a background. So each breast has, its, it's like a fingerprint. And so depending on how you, you know, time of the month or various other factors, it can change a little bit from year to year. So I can look at a mammogram and I see something that looks suspicious, but then I go back seven years ago and it was there before, and then I know it's benign. Sure. And, you know, you talk about those images for someone who's never received a mammogram or perhaps they've done the 2D, but now the 3D is available. Yes. If we could walk through, um, you know, personally, I've gone through it. Um, I'm not going to lie and say it's the most comfortable experience in the world, but it was also far less painful than what I had ever imagined it to be when I actually went in to get it done. Yeah. Um, walk us through what a woman would experience with that 3D mammography, which is offered at all of our sure, locations. Sure, sure. Maybe a little bit of history. I've been around to see all three forms, recent forms, where we did the digital screen mammography. You actually took the pictures and hung them up on light boxes and read them. And then that transferred over to digital mammography where the image was actually on a computer screen. Mm -hmm. And that was shown to improve the cancer detection rates, particularly in patients that had kind of dense breasts. Now, 3D mammography is a step up from that. So instead of looking at a, uh, a monitor, uh, uh, just a single image on a monitor, what we're looking at is slices through the breast on the computer screen. So instead of a 2D image, and we're just looking at two images, we're basically looking at um, a set of images mm -hmm. in two dimensions. So we're getting basically a 3D look at the breast. So instead of one image, we get like 40 images, and then we do that for two projections. So we're basically looking at 80 images now instead wow. of two. It almost reminds me of when, you know, my first time of having pregnancy, the, the pictures we used to get of the ultrasound, <laughs> and then yeah. evolving through the years, like, oh, there's your child. Like, you can see everything in the body. Yeah. Um, you talk about slices. He's just talking about the images. There's no actual incisions of any kind. It's just the... That's correct. It's yeah. just the... One image to the next. Correct. And your technicians are awesome. I can't emphasize enough. You talk about, you know, if, if fear is at all the reason why you're not coming in, the people here will put you completely at ease. And again, at Bellevue Medical Center, look at this fabulous room that you can sit in and just, you know, relax while it's time to wait for your mammogram. Now, in terms of waiting, I remember getting my results, um, particularly through the one chart patient portal, yeah. pretty quickly. And that's another huge benefit, I think. You don't yeah. have to necessarily wait for a call. Um, if everything reads fine, you can get noticed right through that online portal, correct? That's correct. So as long as we're not waiting for outside films to arrive, typically that, that uh, the mammograms read that day or the next day, and you should have results back within 24 to 48 hours. Wonderful. Um, we talked about the women's breast size, whether it's really dense, a larger breast versus a small, you know, closer to the, the rib cage type breast. Is there a difference in the experience, the time it takes to have the screening? Uh, in general, yeah, there can be a little bit difference in time. Uh, for those that are, are larger breasted, it may take a few more compression images so they make sure that we image the entire breast. So instead of, I talked about, you know, two sets of images with, with 40 Image, or two projections with 40 images. We may be looking at four different projections with 40 images. So there might be more images to, to go along with that. But um, in general, the, the, the quality of the exam is just the same. So what would be your advice to someone who's just kind of, you know, pressed for time, they're on the fence about, oh, should I get in to see my doctor? How long is this going to take? How convenient? How much wait time is there to get in? What's your advice to someone who's on the fence like that? Well, I would uh, think about this way. Sometimes you need to be a little selfish. There's other people that rely on you. And so um, screen mammography, it's been shown to reduce mortality rate by 40%. Mm -hmm. And with the 3D mammography, that, those numbers have really improved. Um, and so you need to take into consideration of everything. And sometimes you need to take time for yourself to take care of yourself. And the process itself, uh, by the time you walk in and walk out, is an hour at the most. That's good news. Um, wanted to go ahead and put a screen up to tell you how you can go forward and schedule that online or that mammography. You can do it either by the phone, through the phone or online. The phone number you can call is 402-559-5600. The website, our normal website, NebraskaMed.com, that's where you can get all of our services. But if you want to go straight to the online scheduling page, NebraskaMed.com forward slash mammo.